Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right for you. That's all right, mama. Just any way you do. <laughs> Man, I've got to say, Elvis was fantastic. It was a it was a pretty solid film, and honestly, I was pretty nervous when I had heard this this was coming out. You know, back when I was in high school, I I got to go to Tennessee, right? Went with the family. It was beautiful. We went to Graceland. You know, went to Memphis. Stayed in Nashville. I mean, unfortunately, you know, I was I was under eighteen, so I couldn't really even experience the full music. You know, I couldn't appreciate the music scene because I couldn't go into any bars. We did go to the Grand Ole Opry, which was pretty beautiful, but for the most part, you know. I was really, I really only got to thrive and hang out in Graceland because <laughs> everywhere else I was just looking out from the outside. But I, at that point, I, I understood when we went there, I understood why people wanted mansions. But so when I had heard Elvis was coming out, I was super nervous. I was like, man, you know, I actually like Elvis. And given all the racially charged uh, stuff that's going on in the world right now, or at least in the States right now, it was very, I was very intrigued to see how they were going to portray this man. Like, were they going to show him in a good light, you know, because of uh, the whole, you know, he stole black music thing? Or were they going to show him actually like portray him as like a drug addict groupie guy and like a shithead like you know and like because a, a lot of people don't like elvis so i was very you know confused that they were even going to make the film i was like why haven't they made like that metallica movie that they were going to make i mean or or they i'm surprised that they haven't made a michael jackson movie or you know that they're going to cast a david bowie soon in a david bowie documentary or biopic and we did just have queen and rocket man so i was just like oh they're making elvis all right i mean i it it, it, it it's very warranted but i was just very surprised at this time that they would make it but i guess way what better time than now and um then i I saw who they were who was playing elvis and it was austin butler had no idea who this kid is he apparently played in some disney channel shows or whatever back in the day and that's where he got his start but i was like i don't even know who this guy is so all right i i guess i'm even more intrigued because i don't know I, i have no source material for this guy i don't know what he's been in or what he's done so let's see how he plays elvis and then we see the trailer right and the trailer apparently uh, show that it was going to be about his manager, the Colonel, Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks. F- fucking Tom Hanks. I was like, what? This is crazy. So apparently, the film is just about his... Ma- it's about Elvis, of course, but it's about his manager, the Colonel, who bled him dry pretty much of of his wealth and his and his fame and also put him on the map. I mean, this the Colonel made Elvis the household name that he is. So it's like, you know we we appreciate him question mark but like fuck him (laughs) cause dude this guy it's total music business uh mo of like the manager bleeding the artist dry or whatever of like at least back in the day i guess it probably doesn't happen as much now but there definitely isn't as much heart and soul in music as there was when elvis and you know that generation of course that era of music was just completely different and I will say the only gripe that I had with this movie is that this is an Elvis film and they ended it with the the like credits rolling it's like an Eminem song and there's all these random mashups and mixes and you know skit scats of rap songs mixed in with rock or Elvis tracks and it's just weird because it's like this is a fucking rock movie Gary Clark Jr's in this in this film and you couldn't just have him cover some Elvis tracks like come on guys but whatever and um other than that, I mean, I, I think that was like the only graph I had with the whole movie. I mean, freaking Billy was in this movie from Stranger Things, you know. So Stranger Things, you know, season four just wrapped up and like, goddamn, it was amazing. But seeing uh, what's his name, Daisy, Darcy, da- Dacry, Montgomery in this, I was like, that's cool. There's a lot of actors in this film that are just you're like, whoa, he's in this movie, like hell yeah, or or whatever. Like you know, it was, it was really it was a really well done movie, right? And um, but anyway, so the film kicks off with the Colonel, you know, wanting to find like his next big break or whatever and he ends up meeting Elvis seeing Elvis perform and they go through the whole past of Elvis I mean it was just really done well you know him being a little poor white kid living in like you know a black negro area and just listening and hearing black gospel black you know rock uh music or country music as you as you could say I guess it was just really cool seeing all that portrayed you know and in the end, it it is cool when they really put his gospel music up on a pedestal that that's what really helped change and become the new Elvis was that, you know, his love for his past, you know, and having his parents there and the, the influence his mom had on him and losing his mom and, you know, him going to war, uh, you know, just all that. I mean, it was just a really, really, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> 
it was just a really well done film. I was very shocked at how well they put Elvis how well they portrayed him, you know, and I will say, I guess the only part that was a little, little gray was when he met Priscilla, Priscilla Presley, because technically she was 14 and he was like 25, we want to say 26, uh, when he was like coming home or whatever from the army. And, and it's like, they don't, they make it seem like they're the same age and shit. And it's like, Whoa, there's like a big age gap here. And we're just going to, you know, gloss on over it. But it was just kind of funny that they just glossed on over it. But other than that, you know, (laughs) there's nothing else that really happens. Um, that's too far out of line of how things happen in real life i guess you know they didn't really meet on like a ferris wheel uh, apparently but other than that you know the movie was really really good i didn't quite like how they portrayed bb king and little richard it just seemed a little too outlandish for little richard i guess but he was he was still pretty spot on i guess but it just seemed a little weird a little off and then bb king i didn't quite buy it he just seemed like somebody else but you know maybe i just don't know the history and the the, the obviously the young life of bb king but it just didn't didn't see it and he never put Perform. Like, I would have really liked to see some fucking B.B. King performances. You know, they have little Richard fucking play Tutti Frutti, and it's just, it's a very interesting performance, we'll say, but I would have loved to see some sick-ass B.B. King performances. You know, they show the original... I forgot his name, the the black cat that played in the little shack before Elvis had, you know, started hearing the gospel music. And then I think he actually like, you know, pays homage to him in the film. Like, you know, Elvis actually gives like respect or like whatever to that, that guy. And it happened in real life or whatever. But it's just like, man, I would have, it would have been nice to hear some actual black you know, rock or country or gospel music. The only gospel music they played was when they were in the church. So, you know, it's, again, it's just weird that they played, like, the last song to be an Eminem song. It's just like, come on, people. Like, you, there's a lot of more music creative decisions that you could have used and done, and they didn't, you know. And even the song, even that could have, like, I would have liked to have more Elvis tracks. You know, we, we my, my girl and me and, you know, her parents pointed out that it was cool that they put the whole hound dog scene where he sings to the hound dog uh, on tv for nbc or whatever but it's just like they didn't play any of the uh, apparently they didn't play any like the ed sullivan shows or like any of the other performances that he did give and it's just like i would have just liked to hear more elvis singing uh you know it's like all right we all get it the music industry is like tainted and it's fucked and you know maybe all the artists get shit shorthanded and elvis really got shorthanded but for fuck's sake like they could have just really put more of emphasis on just yeah more of why how and why he created the music that he did they did they did in the beginning like he was it was showing how he just wanted to make the music he wanted to make for people that enjoyed his music and everything and then at the near the end it showed how he again wanted to change his music because he wanted to for him and then it would show people who he really was and all that was great it's just i wish they could have just shown more of it you know but yeah, it was it was a fantastic uh, movie. He, oh, I, I even liked how they portrayed his family and his bodyguards and like his his staff and just everything. He, you know, he loved everybody. He really did. And I think that was what was really cool of, of ultimately how the colonel was like, oh, you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't like the drugs or anything. It was you. It was his fans. It was the love that he had for his music and everything. And I think that was genuinely, I think that was genuinely pretty cool. I mean, this is Tom Hanks we're talking about, right? Tom Hanks is trying to play some, I mean, he would be playing an evil villain, but at the same time, he probably also is playing like try, trying to put that character in. Like at the end of the movie, you you find out that, uh, well, through the through the climax of the movie, when uh, Todd the Colonel puts Elvis in this like five year contract, without Elvis even knowing to cover his own gambling debts, the, to cover the Colonel's gambling debts, you know, it, it that was a pretty heartfelt like, dang, like this is how corrupt this guy really was but then there's also a scene where like elvis is kissing all these women in front of priscilla presley at at their like at his like first or second or third you know like vegas show and it's like bro like you literally are like saying he like calls out his wife like oh you know like i want to or gives a shout out to his beautiful wife and then he goes and kisses all these women in front of her and it's like bro that's not cool (laughs) so you know again it's it's a very the, the portrayal of him was so it was good. It was a good dichotomy of both sides of the music industry of how it can ruin a person, but also, you know, it, it can just ruin a person, you know, um, whether they make bad choices or not. So, yeah, it was great. I, I overall gave it like shit an eight. You know, I'd give it a solid eight, nine out of ten because I, I could rewatch it again because it was I could 
show people that like yeah this is who elvis really wanted to be because most of us are rebels right most of us are rebels without a cause and that's pretty much what all these artists turn out to be and i guess what they all mostly start out as you know whatever time period you want to go back to but yeah so check it out elvis uh thought it was fantastic all-star cast you know just definitely uh wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was and again i'm waiting for the metallica movie and i i think it'd be it's criminal that they would make a metallica movie before they made an acdc movie i mean everyone knows acdc and i mean i'm pretty sure they can make some crazy bond scott or at least angus young biopic where it's like you know going through the motions of having this but maybe his life just isn't as interesting as james hetfield <laughs> yeah 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 um but also like i said i'm pretty sure a david bowie or a michael jackson documentary biopic or whatever has to be in the works has to be uh, if not, I mean, pff, yeah, give it at least another 10 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this has been Ghost in the Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And uh, check out Elvis if you're not a fan. Cool. Definitely say check out the film because it's Tom Hanks. And if you're not a fan of Tom Hanks, uh, all right, fine, whatever. But it's definitely a fun film, and I think you would enjoy it. You guys all have a fantastic one, and peace. But just remember that don't you... Step on my blue suede shoes. Hey, do 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 ba 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 da da. I bump a bottle of herbs. You could do anything, but up over my blue suede shoes. Hey. <laughs>